How's it going friends? On today's video, we are talking everything that you're gonna wanna know before you move to Denver. And there's a whole lot of stuff that we gotta dive into, but I think it's gonna help you make Denver feel like home. All right, let's do this. How's it going friends? My name is Jesse Lynch. I run a real estate team here in Denver We're called Welcome to Denver. But this YouTube channel is all about helping you find a place to land here in Denver, a place to call home. And that's whether you're moving here from out of state or from a different part of Colorado or just buying a house for the first time or both. So if any of those things appeal to you, do us both a favor, subscribe to this channel, click the bell to get notified, give this video a thumbs up and say what's up in the comments. I would appreciate it very much. Right now I'm in City Park, Denver, specifically the actual park. There's also like an area called City Park. And this is the biggest park in all of Denver. It's home to the Denver Zoo, and it's also home to the Denver Museum of Science and Nature. Maybe it's nature and science. I do not recall. But anyways, today's video is just basically what are the things that you're gonna wish you knew before you moved here. I'm gonna go meet up with Jen. We're gonna run you through it. And more importantly, so when you get here to Denver, it feels a little bit more like home. All right, y'all, let's do it. right now we are in Argo Park which is technically in Globeville Denver which is the neighborhood of Denver uh, which actually shares some common space with Rhino this part not technically in Rhino just just north of it by like four blocks probably something like that very close to downtown one thing I really love about this neighborhood is as you can see Denver is huge for beautiful well-maintained parks like we have right here except living right next to those parks usually costs a lot of money but here in argo in the argo park area you can get a home for 300 to five hundred thousand dollars <laughs> are you going to be the ones that are newly renovated some of them have been torn down and rebuilt but the ones that are older the original homes that are still great looking three to five bedrooms just need a little bit of love and care you can get one for three hundred thousand dollars most a lot of people say you know colorado's in new california it's unaffordable you can still live in a family neighborhood buy a park for three hundred thousand dollars here so right now we are in argo park which is technically in the globeville neighborhood of denver and interestingly globeville shares a little bit of a common area with Rhino. Currently, we are not in Rhino. We're like hmm, three, four blocks north of Rhino. And this is a great area because it's a family neighborhood, beautiful, well-maintained park here. And most people assume that that is going to be unaffordable. It has gotten really expensive in Denver, but just outside of Rhino District, really close to downtown, you can get a home here for three hundred thousand dollars, three to five bedrooms. About three to five hundred and thirty thousand dollars is what the homes in this neighborhood are going to be priced at. The upper end of that is going to be homes that have either been scraped and flipped or just super nicely renovated. The older homes that are still nice, three to five bedrooms, are going to be about $300,000. So everyone says, you know, Colorado is the new California, it's too expensive. You can still get a home here across the street from a park for $300,000 in this neighborhood. Guys, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the weather. 
as you can see here, it is a beautiful sunny day. We usually have great weather. However, we wanna talk about things you should be aware of here. And that is, it is always changing. It's super unreliable, especially when the seasons are changing, like winter to spring, spring to summer. For example, in February this year, one day it was 70 degrees and sunny, and two days later, we had two feet of snow on the ground. So that can make it a little bit hard for planning purposes. Most people just like to check their phones for the weather app on a Monday to try and make weekend plans. A little bit harder to do that here. I find that basically useless. I guess it's a little bit helpful. Like it'll give you kind of ballpark. Ballpark. But yeah, <laughs> but if you're trying to plan your Thursday on Monday, obviously everybody knows that it snows here and probably everybody's heard that there's 300 days of sun here, which is amazing. But one thing that never really changes. That's gonna be the dry air here. If you come on vacation, you'll notice it right away. It's not one of those things like the altitude where you just get used to it after living here. The dryness is year round, especially in the winter. The only thing you need to change though is you'll wanna put on more lotion. And especially in the winter, you're gonna to wanna to put on lots of chapstick. Yeah, my hands are sandpaper pretty much all the time and this atmosphere does not help. Yep, most people just forget too. You just put on your lotions and creams and you're good to go. And then one thing that pretty much happens year round, again, you can never really predict it, is it could be very, very windy or it can hail out of nowhere. Literally, I see more hail damaged cars in Denver than like anywhere I've ever been. Another thing with the weather here, as most people know, it does snow here quite a bit, not as much in Denver, but up in the mountains. We do get dumped on a few times every single winter. I personally love it. Every time there's a snow day and you look out the window and everything's white, I just love it so much. If you are not a huge fan of the cold, you're coming from California or Florida maybe, you really don't have to worry. It's not a wet snow. The snow will melt 48 hours or less, especially on the roads. All the sidewalks are salted. So it does melt very, very quickly. And one thing to note is that you might never have to shovel or very, very little have to shovel if you own a home here, specifically a home with a driveway or sidewalk. But one thing I guess to pay attention to, totally adverse to shoveling would be that if your driveway is sort of on the north facing side of the house or yeah, whether that be an alley or a front driveway, you're gonna have to shovel more than if your house is facing, or specifically your driveway is facing to the south. Yeah, so it's great when you have that street where there's a north facing and a south facing. The north facing just get to look at the opposite side and see their nice clean driveway by the end of the day while they're shoveling the snow. So again, not a big deal, but if you really hate shoveling, it's just one thing to look out for when you're house shopping. And the next thing to note if you are thinking about moving here is going to be... That tires matter and your car matters you can't get away with driving i don't know some like sweet sports car all year round because it's not going to handle the weather very well you're certainly going to have a nightmare going up into the mountains but specifically when it comes to tires first of all if you can get a four-wheel drive car sweet do it you'll be glad you did second of all tires matter tires are very important um specifically if you can get all season tires cool if you can get snow tires cool or if you can have a combination of four-wheel drive and some nice all-season or all-terrain tires then chilling yeah you winter. shouldn't you shouldn't have much of a problem at all and the next thing to know i know this because i have spent time living in california growing up i did move here with my two-door two-wheel car you can be the best driver in the world if you hit a patch of ice your car is going to slide and that is why in the winter, just because we're used to snow, it is a nightmare every winter. There's tons of accidents and that's not because everyone just sucks at driving in the snow. It's because they're trying to do what I did, drive with their two wheel car and think it, oh, it's fine. Another thing that can help is to just know when you do start to slide or when you need to come to a stop, you pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. So it's very typical, especially when your fear is triggered to slam on the brakes. That actually makes you slide further because you think about it, your wheels are stopping and now you have a perfect slide traction. If you pump the brakes, you will stop. So take a deep breath, pump the brakes. That will save you from sliding off the road and getting into an accident here. If you slam on the brakes, you turn your car into skis, basically. Well said, yep. Yeah. Don't do that. Yep, okay. a lot of people learn the hard way here. All right, we're gonna go over there.
All right, friends, right now we are walking in the Rhino Arts District, aka Rhino, aka River North, aka probably the hippest area in all of Denver. I don't know, if you're looking for industrial, you know, tons of murals, very trendy, full of breweries and cafes, this is definitely the spot. Colorado is actually home to over 10% of the nation's craft beer. So we have tons of breweries here. It's a year round thing with festivals. There's a big one there, big one there, big one there, there. <laughs> there I mean, they're literally everywhere. They're everywhere. So if you like beer, they're an awesome place to go. Even if you don't like beer, they serve kombucha at these places. They're outdoor, indoor seating, tons of fun. We also, this isn't in Denver, but this is huge here and a ton of fun. If you go to Golden, that is home to Coors Brewing. The Coors headquarters. And if you're not a huge Coors fan, after you go to that, the headquarters, you will be. They show you how they make it all. It's like the most massive brewing place I've ever seen. Plus they give you free beer at the end of the tour. So what's not to love? That's fair. I don't drink. So it is cool that all these microbreweries have like, like NA beers and kombucha and stuff. So, you know, your weirdo friends like me who don't drink don't have to like just get a water. I'll get a beer with you after though. I have some house shopping. I'll get a kombucha. Speaking of Golden, Golden is the home of Red Rock Amphitheater, which is pretty easily defined as the sickest outdoor amphitheater in the world. Oh, it's always right number one every single year in the nation. There's shows there, which is what it's most known for. Everyone comes to Red Rocks. There's, I can't even say, you know, what type of music you, if you should go to, if you like it, they literally do every single type of show there. Everything. And if you're not into that, that's fine because you can go there and do morning yoga in the summer, watch the sunrise over the Red Rocks. You can go there with your family. It's very, very popular to post a picture of you running up the stairs. That's a big like cross off the bucket list. It is way harder than it looks. You will be out of breath. It's a little bit higher altitude or a lot higher altitude than what we're at in Denver. So it is tough. So exercise is huge there, hiking, running, yoga, like I said, and then of course the fun part and what it's known for is the awesome shows. If you've never seen it, it's the music bounces off and it's, it's natural, which is cool. Usually amphitheaters are made, you know, and made, but these are like natural it happens. They made a perfect round nature made a formation for music. So it's really, really fun. Yeah, super cool. Uh, before I was ever in Denver, my band on a tour, we just stopped just to see Red Rock because it's such like a legendary spot. Yeah. Which brings me to the idea that Denver is like a cultural stop. It's maybe not a hub. It's certainly not like New York or LA. Everything stops here. All the big tours stop here. All genres of music will pretty much always stop by Denver. I grew up in Minneapolis. I liked a bunch of like emo music and all the time they would skip us and it was <laughs> such a bummer. So you'd either have to go to Chicago or Denver. They're pretty much the closest like major stops for major tours. So that is a very cool thing about Denver. You will not get skipped over. And that's also because Denver, the airport is an international hub for flights. So it makes it easy for travel. You can go almost anywhere in the country on a straight flight, which makes the travel time a lot less or travel out of the country. It's just one of the reasons that everybody always stops in Denver. It is relatively easy to get to. A total, a total cultural hub, just hub of everything is that they basically here in Denver, we have every single sports team of every major huge sports people, but Colorado Avalanche, Colorado Rockies, Denver Nuggets, Denver Broncos. And if you're not a big sports person, you will love the Broncos games. I am not super into sports. However, it is always a good time going to the Broncos and watching them play. The bars outside are always a ton of fun. There's tons of people. So really looking forward to those coming back this year. Yeah, Coors Field is also a very beautiful field. In addition to Coors Field, which, which is very, very popular here, we have lots of things for the artsy folks, the botanical gardens, it's open year round. Of course, the springtime is when everything is blossoming. So it's really fun to go check out, especially in the spring. We also have the Performance Art Center. There's tons of museums here. So if you have family that comes to town, there's literally too many things to take them to do if you're looking for tourist things to do. You find it all here. Totally, also, you got the mountains about an hour and a half away. Less than that, depends what mountain you're going to. True, you also got the zoo, you got an aquarium, you got the children's museum. And so, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're here alone, if you're a millennial, there's tons of the brewery stuff that we just walked by. If you're here with your family, your kids, your grandparents, whatever, then you can do all those very, very wholesome things. And very, very close together too. We're gonna hop over to Capitol Hill real quick. All 
much, Al. Right now we are right in front of the Capitol, and which is technically in the Capitol Hill neighborhood. The Capitol is like the northwesternmost boundary, more or less, of the Capitol Hill neighborhood. That's where they got their name. See what they did there? Clever. So let's talk about another thing to know when you are thinking about moving to Denver. The cost of living here is high. However, with that said, you know, real estate is a way to grow your wealth year after year for the last two decades, even through 2008. The appreciation year after year here is about eight to 10% every single year. So if you think about that, you know, whatever you're paying for, you are growing so much equity in that home every single year. A ton, honestly. Because there's, you know, there's a quarter of a million people moving here every single year. So of course, based off the law of supply and demand, all of, you know, quarter of a million people is a lot of people that's going to make prices go up. Everyone does want to live here and no one's leaving. Great place to be. With that said, we also have one of the lowest property taxes and income taxes in the nation. So with the high cost of living or the high cost of property, I should say, you do have those other little perks. You're gaining a bunch of equity and you're not paying as much as most states for those property taxes and income taxes. It's like a little bit of a reprieve on what's otherwise like pretty expensive housing market. And while we're by the Capitol, we're gonna talk a little bit about the politics here. I'm not gonna take any sides, but Basically, Colorado is like a swing state. It is basically a couple blue dots surrounded by a bunch of red. Yep, yep. The further out you get, the more conservative it gets. You know, you start in Denver, it's pretty liberal. Then you go further out, um, you know, by Colorado Springs and those surrounding rural cities. And then it gets a little bit more conservative. I mean, that's pretty much a microcosm of the whole country. Though. That's very vague, yeah. yeah but, um, but for sure, the politics within Denver proper are gonna be liberal. Overall, the state as a whole, liberal, but there's a whole bunch of conservative areas, you know, throughout the state. Which just makes it nice. Sum it up, you know, we are a swing state. Everybody is welcome here, all opinions included. And with that, Denver is basically a melting pot. There's so many people who are not natives to here, myself included. And one thing that came with that very easily was it was easy to make friends. There are natives actually who, there's a weird native pride here. By oh the yeah, way. yep. Like, people are weirdly proud about being native to Colorado more there's than- there's so few of, I guess I'm of, I was gonna say of us, I'm technically native, <laughs> but I have lived in many other spots since I was born. You're a trader. Yep. But, yeah, yeah, I traded for a while. <laughs> but but yeah, it's like a, it's a weird, uh, fascinating thing that like people, identify themselves as native Coloradans, you know? And but one of my own little pet peeves with the whole melting pot is that you get a whole bunch of different driving styles all wrapped up into one metro area. It's generally not great. The thing with the melting pot and the drivers is it's always everyone else's fault. You know, if you're yeah. native here, it's at all the out-of-staters' fault. If you're from California, we drive too slow here. If you're from Minnesota, you probably drive too slow here. You probably do, yeah. You know, it's, it's and it's people that move here and they have their two wheel drive, so they're sliding in the winter. It's it's everyone thinks it's everyone else's fault, which just makes it a complete disaster, especially in the winter when we do get dumped snow. It's expect traffic every time, or try not to commute when there's a really bad snow day because you just have too many people from different places that think they know what they're doing and none of us really do. That's what it comes down to. So get snow tires, figure out how to drive and you, you'll fit in, kind of. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Another weird thing that you'll find here, and I think this is also due to it kind of being a melting pot in a hub, is that there's no fashion statement here. California, Northern California, people dress up and Southern California is casual. You know, New York City, everyone looks really, really nice all the time. Here it's very, anything kind of goes. You'll, you will see a lot of athletic wear. It's not that people are always lounging around in sweatpants and sweatshirts. People pay not good money for expensive athletic clothes and that's accepted in restaurants, bars, especially with a lot of people working remote these days, there isn't a huge need for professional wear. So it's hard to pinpoint one fashion style. It's really, I would just call it relaxed. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of people judging you based off of what you're wearing here, which is nice. It almost was like surprising to me. I, you know, I was from Minneapolis and Minneapolis is like a pretty hipster spot. Like there's, there's kind of two types of, I don't know, styles. There's hipster and then there's like kind of cake eater, right? Like we, we call it cake eaters. And so it's either people dress really nice or dress 
hip, right? But here it's like, maybe it's cause it's such like an outdoor friendly spot and people are like ready to go for a jog at like any moment, but athleisure just dominates the style. And I find it kind of, kind of fascinating. And the last thing to note about moving here is typically when people say they're moving here or they're looking to move here, they're talking about the front range. So you'll hear the front range a lot in when you're in Denver. The front range is Denver, Boulder, and Fort Collins. So that's where like the metro area is here. That's where all the businesses are growing. That's where all the new builds are coming in. Outside of that, you just get, it's beautiful, but you don't get a lot of people that are moving to like, you know, Eastern Colorado. You might drive through there, but typically they're talking about the front range. You know, a lot of us real estate agents, we say we serve the front range and that's what that means. Denver, Boulder, Fort Collins. And yeah, one interesting thing to me is that uh, because I think I come from the Twin Cities, which is like a kind of a stereotypical metro area where the cities are in the middle and then the suburbs are around it, that's not the case with Denver. Denver proper is basically like the southernmost part of the metro. I mean, there are some things south of Denver, but overwhelmingly it's between Denver and Boulder. And Boulder is like 45 minutes north of yep. Denver. So that's kind of where like the real bulk of suburbs are here in the Denver metro. probably really important thing to know and it might even just be like the reason you're moving here to begin with that it's a super recreationally friendly state and I don't mean weed I mean like <laughs> you can do a lot of stuff outside for one like we said the weather is amazing but you know you're an hour from the mountains it is a super bike friendly place run friendly place you're ridiculous. You run too. <laughs> you run Lots too of much. running here, guys. And Denver pretty much always comes up right at the top of the list of uh, healthiest cities in the entire nation. And that's also do you know just you don't it doesn't mean every single person is hitting the gym at 6 a.m. I think part of that's just due to the fact that we have awesome weather here and there's so many outdoor activities. You can stay in shape by just doing fun things with your friends on the weekends or after work. So I don't think because we are such a healthy city and outdoor activity. You know, you're hitting the gym a.m. and p.m. It's simply just going hiking with your friends, biking around the city, going to the games and stuff. There's just so many activities to do. It's hard to find an excuse to sit at home on the couch every weekend. Why live here if you're not gonna enjoy this like amazing geography, amazing weather, right? So kind of by default, I'm sure it just brings the average up to just be more healthy because there's so exactly. much to do outside. So to, on top of being one of the healthiest cities in the nation, that shows in the Olympics, in the Winter Olympics in 2018, our state sent the most Olympians to the Olympics. 13% of the Olympians were from Colorado. We also do have the Olympic Center in Colorado Springs, so I think that drives a lot of professional athletes here as well. I'm sure just the elevation, I'm sure it's an awesome place to train just for the elevation. Uh, the first time I ever played a show in Denver, I, my band was ridiculous, we jump around a lot like idiots, but I was so out of breath, like two songs in, I was so out of breath, and I was like, what? I was like, am I dying? I think I'm dying. But no, it's just the elevation's really high. Like with that, I compete professionally for running, and you know, it's tough up here, but when you go down to sea level, you feel like you are flying, or floating, flying and floating. It's a great feeling. It's so like it's a great place to train. <laughs> yeah, yeah like you wonderful. go to cave bombs, what you feel like. Yeah, and even though we are a mile up, a mile high city, we're still not really in the mountains. Again, you're about an hour away from where the mountains really start to take off. And you know, there's some of the most beautiful mountain ranges, I don't know, in the country for sure. But it's not mountain living here. I mean, it's a lot of Denver is flat. Yeah. So you can see the mountains, which is the best part of Denver, but you're not, you know, hauling up a dirt road to your mountain, your cabin mountain house. You drive to the mountains. So being this close to the mountains, but still having that city life does attract people from all over the world. Lonely Planet actually ranked it as one of the number one destinations to visit in the world on their top list. So that's pretty cool. However, with that, you know, be prepared for 
it's not just rush hour traffic. We do have a lot of traffic in the weekends, especially up in the mountains. It's because everyone that lives in Denver wants to go do things and then everyone that's visiting also wants to go do things. So do be prepared for traffic. If you're from somewhere like California or New York, you know, you'll laugh at it. <laughs> but for the most part, it, it is, you know, it can be hefty traffic. we are back at the shop at my studio and the next pro the final pro of moving to Denver is that you can potentially work with us and we will absolutely crush it for you that's a little bit shameless I apologize for that but I promise if you reach out to us we will absolutely crush it for you and you should do so any way you can you can go to our website welcome to denver.co we have a contact form there you can email us at info at welcome to denver.co you can call or text the number on the screen I promise you'll get right a hold of us or give us a shout on Instagram at welcome to denver.co. Okay, we did it. As always, as you exit the video, please do so safely. Subscribe to the channel, click that bell to get notified. Give this video a thumbs up and say what's up in the comments. I'd appreciate that very, very, very much. We went all over Denver to make this video. We were everywhere. So truly would appreciate the thumbs up, appreciate the support very much. And can't wait to show you the next video. We've got a lot in the pipeline. Appreciate you watching. Welcome to Denver.